Hello students, welcome to discussion of chapter 8, Hypotheses Testing. So chapter 8 builds upon the work we've done in chapter 7, and it leads quite well into the third lab assignment. Um, so as you're going through chapter 8, I would uh, keep that third lab assignment handy because it will uh, help you go through some of those uh, required steps. But the third lab assignment is basically um, we have a claim by a business, uh, McDonald's to be exact, where they claim that their french fries are of a certain length or that a percentage of their french fries are of that length. And for whatever reason, um, we don't believe their claim to be true. So what we do in chapter 8 is we look at some ways, or we look at one way to uh, ver or to test the claim. So Chapter 8, Hypothesis Testing, is all about testing uh, claims made by, you know, businesses, governments, individuals, lobbyists. Um, various groups can make a statement or they can have an hypothesis about something. Our job is to test the accuracy of um, their claim. So what happens in order, in order to do that, we take a sample um, and we test that data against the um, claims or perceptions of um, the population values. So during this process in chapter 8 we will always have two Z values or two T values. So remember chapter 7 Z or T depends on the question depends if the population standard deviation is known to us. If the population standard deviation is known we use a Z value if it's not known we're going to use that T value. So because we have two Z values or two, two uh, T values, we need to differentiate the names. So one of the Z values or T values is going to be called a critical value. That's like a threshold value. And the other Z value or T value is referred to as the test uh, statistic. And that's, a va that's, a me that, that's the value that we are going to measure and calculate. So let's go into good example that will help us go through this process and the uh, the steps involved. So this is something uh, almost directly from your lab. We have an um, organization, McDonald's, they claim that their french fries are on average eight centimeters in length. However, for whatever reason, we do not believe that to be true. So in order to determine if they are wrong, we need to take a sample of the french fries because there's no way we can go out and get every french fry served. So we take a sample, same reasons back in chapter 7, it, take, it saves time and saves money. And we use that sample data to test the accuracy of McDonald's claims. So we take that sample, we measure the french fries. This is something you will be doing in your lab. You will be purchasing a small or medium order of french fries from McDonald's. I want you to measure them accurately to at least the closest millimeter and uh, then put that data into Excel and um, follow the lab instructions. But basically this is um, what you would do in a real life situation where you want to test the accuracy of various claims. So we test a sample of french fries. We find that the average length is only 6.8 centimeters and not the 8 centimeter length that they claimed. So at this point, do we have enough evidence to state that McDonald's french fries are not 8 centimeters in length and perhaps McDonald's is lying to their consumers? At this point, definite no. Uh, one thing we have to remember back in Chapter 6 and Chapter 7 is that sample data is not 100% accurate. So what we need to do is develop a systematic process in order to use the power of statistics, which is the laws of probability and normal distribution. So now the typical question, we can put some more wording into it. Uh, beginning part is the same part, um, we're just adding some data to it. So McDonald's claims that french fries are on average 8 centimeters in length. We have conducted a sample to test their claim by taking a sample of 113 french fries. And uh, 
that's usually a large order french fries if in case you're wondering and we found that the average length is 6.8 centimeters the population standard deviation is given to us so it's 2.43 centimeters remember if we have the population standard deviation we can use normal distribution and apply a z value to it if we did not know the population standard deviation we would then have to calculate our own standard deviation from the sample at that point we could not use uh, a z value we would have to use a t value but in this first question we're going to use a z value so we're going to test the claim that the average french fry is different than eight centimeters um, and we're using that alpha value that's similar to um, chapter seven in terms of the chance of error we only want a five percent chance of making that uh, making a mistake so there's a quick and easy six step process to to correctly determine using the laws of probability and the power of statistics to determine if McDonald's is wrong. I'm going to go through these steps. I've outlined them in the uh, following PowerPoints, but we're going to go through some of these steps as we're directly working with the question. The first two um, steps are to identify the null hypotheses. The null hypotheses is the company's claim or statement. Usually it's the first or last uh, statement in the question. So we, we're going to abbreviate the null hypotheses as H0. Um, and there's two ways of writing this. H0, um, that population mean symbol, basically saying that the average is going to be greater than or less than or equal to some value. We can also do an hypothesis test for the proportion. The proportion of French fries greater than a certain length. Um, so that's what we would use when it's uh, dealing with proportions. Step two, very similar to step one. If you've done step one right, you will do step two correct. Step two is to identify the alternate hypotheses, HA. Uh, some books just use H1 for that but uh, I'll abbreviate, abbreviate it as HA. This is the testing or research claim or statement. This is what we are going to be doing. These two statements are always, always, always opposite. Some books um, don't have that, um, that requirement. That's why I don't use some books because these have to be mutually exclusive. So they are always viewed as opposite. So the alternate hypotheses HA for the average and HA for the proportion, depending on the type of question. So let's go into um, our question to see if we know what the null hypotheses, H, uh, HO or H0, or the alternate hypotheses HA. Let's go here. Oops, sorry, that's not the right one. What happened? This is the one. That's not the one. Okay, here's the question. This is right from the PowerPoint slide. So let's go through this question to um, identify the null hypotheses and the alternate hypotheses. So this is step one and step two. So McDonald's claims, so this is basically the null hypotheses, that their french fries are on average eight centimeters in length. So we're going to have, it's talking about an average. So this is the symbol for average. The population parameter, population average in this case, is this is always assumed um, to, be, uh, to be correct. They are claiming that, that the average is eight centimeters. The alternate hypotheses, right at the bottom, generally it states, it may only state one, so that's why you have to remember that the two hypotheses are always opposite of each other. But the alternate hypothesis states that 
the claim or test the claim so that's the research hypothesis that the average is different than eight centimeters so that's how we would write different so these two statements are opposite of each other the null hypothesis is a claim they're claiming that their average is eight centimeters we are testing to see if it's different than eight centimeters let's go back to our powerpoint for step oops for step uh, three Step three is formatting the hypotheses and identifying the key equality sign or inequality sign. So we'll just go over this briefly. There's three different formats of hypotheses tests, of all hypotheses tests. One, the first one we'll talk about, is called a two-tailed test, both ends of the bell curve. The key word here, so let's just write this, Keyword is going to be something like different, not equal to. Especially in the research hypotheses HA statement, whereas the null hypotheses might state that the average is, or the proportion is, a certain value. So in this case, we're going to have equal signs. So if we were to draw out this, null, this uh, the bell curve, because it follows a relatively normal distribution, Basically, um, what this um, format implies is that um, anything really, really, really much larger than they state or something really much smaller than they state is um, something that we would be concerned about. Um, for McDonald's french fries, we're concerned if it's not equal to 8 centimeters. So the average is 8 centimeters. We would be concerned that if it is a lot greater, we don't know what this number represents here. It could be 10 or 11 or 12 centimeters, and we would be concerned if it's down here at the lower end, down to 3 or 4 centimeters. Anywhere in the middle here would be okay. So that would be the format of one type of test. We can quickly look at the formats of the other types of tests. These are called one-tailed tests. So keywords are going to be, you know, greater than, less, more, at least. And these are going to be the same words for the net, for the other type of hypothesis tests or format as well. So in this case. We have a distribution, something like that. We'd have an average here. Say McDonald's claims that's eight centimeters. We're testing to see. We're concerned if the average is much greater. So we'd be concerned if it's somewhere out there. If we get a measurement, it's way out here. That's enough evidence for us to state that McDonald's is wrong. If we get an average here, down there, it's not different enough from what they claim for us to state that McDonald's is, is wrong. So the difference has to be significant, statistically significant, has to be beyond a certain point. We can look back at a two-tailed two test. If the average is right here, not different enough. If the average is here or over here, the average would be uh, considered to be um, statistically different enough from the um, hypotheses. So the other format, the last format of a hypothesis test, has generally the same key words. Um, we'd have an average, say it's eight centimeters, just use that McDonald's example, and we're testing to see if it's down in this area here. We might get a value, um, anything way far extreme left would be um, statistically different enough any value in here, no matter where it is, we would not be able to say that McDonald's is correct, um, is, would be wrong. So same, same key words as the other format for a one-tailed test. So we'll go into step three and step, or step four uh, in the next video.